Let, let's talk about that base case specifically as it relates to the consumer and also business spending. I love to look at CapEx. And we had the revision when we got the GDP number out yesterday. Initially, CapEx was up 13.1%. Now it's up 10.7% based on that GDP. Are business managers still putting money to work, spending on CapEx? How important is that? They are. We think it is important, and that's important for future productivity growth and for expanding the productive capacity of the U.S. economy. That by itself is not going to drive the overall GDP number because most of GDP is driven by consumer spending, but it's important for the long-run competitiveness of the country. But that has we, more to do with deregulation, doesn't it? Well, it has to do with deregulation. It also has to do with interest rates. We know, we know that by raising interest rates that we are raising the borrowing cost for companies. We're raising the borrowing cost for consumers. So we know housing and autos have slowed in part in response to the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle. Uh, how much is that bleeding through and affecting the corporate sector? I don't think as much yet, but I think uh, it could in the future, and that's why it's important that we paused. All right, let's talk about the consumer. What do you see? Well, again, I th wages, wage growth is the most important driver, in my mind, for long-term consumer growth, consumer spending growth. And wage growth is ticking up slowly. It's not yet at levels that signal high inflation to come in the future. And we're seeing a lot of wage growth. Most of the wage growth is happening at the low end, you know, lower income workers with lower skills. And that's great. They need a raise. It's been, they're long overdue for a raise. So that's really positive. And those Americans tend to spend their money. When they get a raise, they tend to put it to work because they need to spend it to meet the needs of their families. So that, to me, says consumer spending should be strong in the future. But again, we need to wait and see. Are you seeing green shoots in the housing market? Well, we know mortgage rates have come back down in response to the following 10-year Treasury yields. So that should signal somewhat of a housing rebound in the near future. But again, it's also going to relate to consumer psychology and consumer confidence. Do people feel confident enough to take on a new mortgage to go buy a new house? So, I mean, when you take out California, this is a, a point that Rick Reeder just made. When you take out California, which is 15 percent of the GDP, apparently, um, it, housing actually looks OK. But and you would think that a drop in mortgage rates would only help that. It should help that. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. You're a voting member of the Fed next year. Correct. Is that right? So based on what you know now, would you be poised to say no moves next year? Well, I think it's way too soon to make any kind of judgments about that. For me, the fundamental point is what's happening in the labor market. Are there still Americans out there? Because that's going to determine is this economy running above potential at potential or below potential? Is there more supply out there? I continue to believe there is. I hear businesses all the time complaining that they can't find workers. And then I say, well, look at the wage data. The wage data hasn't picked up that much. So you're just whining. Businesses want to get workers cheap. And if they can't get workers cheap, they declare it's a historic worker shortage. That's just a bunch of hot air. Yeah. So let's see, let's you know, put their money where their mouth is. When wage growth really picks up, then I think we'll know we're really at full employment. So you're happy that wage growth has picked up, obviously, but it hasn't picked up to the extent that it's going to be inflationary. Correct. Because yeah. if you look at wage growth net of productivity, it's still not signaling inflation above 2%. So that says to me there's still more supply out there. How closely do you look at the stock market in terms of the wealth effect? I mean, that was one of Alan Greenspan's favorite things. We pay attention to it, but it's not a primary, for me at least, it's not a primary driver of how I think about monetary policy. The labor market and inflation data and inflation expectations way more important than the stock market. And MMT also has become top of mind. Uh, <laughs> For some days. people. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think it's... Um, explain, I don't think... explain it and tell us how you uh, well, look at it. Well, this is the thing. No matter Anybody who explains it is going to be criticized by the proponents saying that they explained it wrong. So okay. th that's your first yeah, evidence okay. that it's okay. a little bit questionable. It's not my judgment. It's not really an economic theory. It's more of a political philosophy. Uh, I think the part that they have right is that the U.S. government has more capacity to issue debt. If you want to invest in infrastructure, debt is a reasonable way to finance infrastructure. But does it mean that the U.S. government can just spend, spend, spend and fund all of our dreams? No. That yeah. will ultimately lead to inflation. Yeah, especially when we're looking at $22 trillion in debt. All right, so bottom line, big story of the week was the inversion. You're not worried about it. No, I am paying attention to it. I'm paying I think attention it's an, to it. But you... It's an important signal, but I don't want to overreact to it. I think it's giving us feedback on where the neutral rate is. I don't yet think we move to a contractionary policy stance. But we might have. There's a lot of uncertainty around this, so we need to pay very close attention to it. I think the yield curve is at least telling us investors are expecting slower growth in the next few years, and we should take that seriously as well. Yeah, I mean, can the U.S. just go it alone and not get impacted by Europe and Asia? I don't think so, no. We're, th those economies are too big, and we are inter interconnected enough that they, they matter. Neil, it's great to have you on the program. Great to see you. You're going to be my special guest this weekend on Wall Street. We look forward to that. Me too. Thank you so much.